this tutorial, I show you how to quickly conceptualize stadium design natively in Revit and without the use of add-ins or Dynamo scripts. The design in this tutorial is based on a conventional football stadium, like this. This was modeled in less than 15 minutes using the workflow presented in this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe so that I can keep bringing you free content. There's heaps to unpack, so let's dive right in. To start, under the subtitle Family, click New. This opens the family templates. To create a conceptual design, use the massing tool. Click the selected folder and then open metric mass. This is the massing starting screen. Click the default level 1 view and using the default reference intersection, start mapping out the extents of the stadium. Once you have a setup that matches the screen, Start adding dimensions until you end up with a setup that looks like this. It is important to name reference planes, just as you would if building a parametric Revit family. Here I use simple names to help guide me through the build. Something like left or right, back and front will help. Here, I have clicked ahead a couple of steps, so let me take a moment to explain. Add a sectional view here. The next tool to master is work planes. These essentially help you stitch the model together from a combination of lines drawn on a 2D plane which have a 3D origin. To demonstrate, here I select the center plane between the front and the back. Revit will then redirect me to a 2D view of that work plane. In this case, I choose the sectional view that I previously created. In this sectional view, you can see some pre-created levels. I'll get to these shortly. Such as with any design, having a preconceived idea of what you are building will help. Here, I am using an AutoCAD 2D sketch that will help define the framework and the basic shape for the stadium. It will also help set out the levels. I am sure that most of you know how to insert AutoCAD files into Revit. What's important to note in this instance is the current view only checkbox. This means the AutoCAD file will only be inserted and visible in that view. This is good because it's a sacrificial sketch item. Once inserted, zoom in to concentrate the sketch within the screen real estate. Revit will pin the import by the fault, but I need to move it. To do so, select Unpin and then Move. I have just aligned the import to the left reference plane. When completed, pin it down again. In 3D view, notice the CAD image is not visible. Back in the sectional view, we can begin to explore the benefits of using an AutoCAD sketch in conceptual design. Find model lines. These are used to build a frame for solids. Ensure that draw on plane is selected and then nominate the work plane. Then select the pick lines tool. Now simply select the import and hit tab to do a quick select. Then switch to 3D view. Here you can see the 2D model line profile hosted to the center horizontal plane. Now use this to create a form. Essentially Revit will sweep the profile along the path and that path is the enclosed reference line. So select both and then from the ribbon find create form and then click solid. And just like that canopy has been modelled. Once that first form has been created, add in the field for context. If you are a subscriber, send me a message and I can gladly share the files with you. To load the field family, first find the insert tab and then the load family button. 
find the field family and then load it into your mass family. To place the family, find it in the project browser. Then right click to create instance. When placing, notice that the field's family origin point is the center of the field. Simply place this at the center of the mass family, where the main reference planes intersect. Once placed, and while still selected, move across to the properties palette and find level, and then choose level B1. To view level B1 on the project browser, find the view tab on the ribbon and then find the floor plan button. Click this to launch the dialog and from the dialog select B1 and click OK. OK, so now we can start to model the stands. Go back to the sectional view. From the Modify tab, find the Model tool. Select Pick Lines and confirm Reference Plane is set to Center Front and Back. Also ensure the Draw on Plane is selected. Then pick the Stands portion of the CAD insert. Remember to use the Tab function to trace quickly. For this tutorial, it is important to note that the yellow outlines represent voids. This will make more sense later on. Once all is selected, switch to the 3D view, then move down to the view control bar and set the display graphics to wireframe, then zoom into the target area as shown. Select the 2D model sketch and sweep this along the perimeter reference path. To complete the solid, from the ribbon, pick Create Form. To create the void sections, the yellow sections previously mentioned, first pin the model line representing the three tiers. Do this from the selection toggles bar. Then you should find it easier to select the void sections. Once the three sections have been selected, click the perimeter reference path and then from the ribbon find create form, but this time choose void form. Use the section one view to check the completed structure. To complete the external structure, use the model line tool again. However, instead of using pick lines, this time use the rectangle tool. Then on the CAD import, pick a corner and then pick the opposite corner to complete the 2D sketch. Repeating the steps already demonstrated, switch to 3D view. To best view the rectangle profile just sketched, rotate the model using the view cube. Then select the perimeter reference as the path, then the 2D model line sketch as the profile and from the ribbon click create form, then pick solid to create the structure. Use section view 1 to verify the results. To view progress in 3D, select the 3D view and then from the graphic display choose hidden lines. Close all views and save progress. Then from the project browser, click level one. Add a reference plane as shown. Then use the copy function to create additional reference planes so that your set out matches the screen. Continue to copy the references as shown. Be sure to follow the dimensions closely. Create an additional sectional view to edit the front facade. From the ribbon, find view and click on section. Then place the section so that only the front elevation is visible. This can be done by controlling the far clip offset. When you are set, right click on the section marker and choose go to view. Switch back to level one and find section one. Go to this view.
From the selection toolbar, deselect the pin icon and then find reference plane as shown and rename this entry. Then switch to section two and from the modify tab, find set work plane. Select the model line tool. Then choose reference plane entry as the work plane. Once done, move back up to the ribbon and choose the rectangle tool and use this to sketch as shown. When the sketches are complete, move to a 3D view. Select each rectangle and use the Create Form tool to cut these as voids. Switch to wireframe to see the result. Now we can begin to embellish the design by using surfaces. On the front elevation, select the Form Highlighter on screen, then divide this surface, change the number of grids in the Properties palette. Here, I am essentially hiding the sloped section. We will come back to this a little later in the tutorial. What I am left with is an extended vertical wall at the entrance. This concludes part one. Please make sure you join me for part two. Either select the card at the end of this video or the link in the descriptions box below. If you are following along in this tutorial, please give this video a like, add a comment and subscribe. All of this goes a long way to help me keep providing you with free content.